Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now and this month we're here in Ireland on this very special dairy farm which is aiming to become 100% climate neutral while also turning a profit. It's a big challenge, so can it be done? We've already achieved a 27% reduction in our carbon footprint. We're hoping to get this to about 50 to 65% in phase two and be climate neutral by 2030. Before that, let's take a look at the very latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, we've now seen extraordinary temperatures for 11 months in a row. We had the warmest April on record, 0.7 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. Europe saw a sharp contrast in temperature anomalies across the continent. It was much warmer than average in the east in particular. At the same time, Scandinavia was a few degrees colder than average last month. April continued to see above average precipitation in many northerly parts of Europe, shaded in blue on this map. The Easter holidays were a washout for many Europeans. This map of soil moisture anomaly for last month highlights how the land in northwestern Europe is wetter than average, contrasting with drier soil from eastern Spain to Turkey. Further afield, Dubai was flooded after a record-breaking deluge. Some parts of the Emirates saw the equivalent of two years' worth of rain in 24 hours. Now to our report on the challenge of creating a climate-neutral dairy farm. This 100-hectare farm near Cork is aiming to be a pioneer in environmental sustainability. The goal being to slash greenhouse gas emissions to zero and still make a profit. The first step for Farm Zero C project manager Pordrick Walsh was to take stock of the situation. So we measured the carbon footprint of all the inputs and all the outputs of the farm. We created a model based on this as well. Um, and then we were able to identify our biggest emitters. The assessment showed that the farm's biggest emitters are also its biggest revenue generators, the dairy cows. We could see that methane was a huge emitter for us. Over 50% of our emissions come from methane from cows from these girls here. Um, from them digesting their food and releasing methane into the atmosphere. There's no easy way to reduce methane emissions when the cows are grazing, although during the winter when the herd is indoors, there are additives that do make a difference. We're getting about a 7% reduction in our methane emissions by feeding the cows during the housing period. And this chemical additive reduces methane emissions from storage slurry by, by about 75%. Each time the cows come in to be milked, the farm sees a spike in electricity demand. So they're testing how to fit wind and solar energy into a farming business. Meanwhile, in the fields, the emissions reduction solutions come from nature, not technology, as scientist Mary-Kate Doherty explains. So this is a multi-species field here, so that's three or more species of plants. So here we have chicory, plantain, white clover and ryegrass. So this was a big thing in reducing our carbon footprint. The chicory and plantain help sequester carbon and boost water quality, while the clover fixes nitrogen into the soil and avoids the need for carbon intensive fertilisers. Lots of the fields here last year that have high clover didn't get any chemical fertiliser and still produce as much grass as the fields that did get chemical fertiliser. 10% of the farm is devoted to boosting biodiversity. Creating wetlands isn't profitable today, but the project aims to test so-called carbon farming, which would reward this type of landscape. This kind of area is providing a lot of benefits for the wider, wider environment and we feel farmers should be paid for that. To reach net zero by 2030, the business and academic partners need to find a sustainable methane reduction solution for the cows. They believe they can develop a climate neutral business model for Irish dairy farmers and bring consumers of cheese and milk on board too. We believe that consumers will pay a premium for our uh, lower carbon footprint products. Uh, we all need to tackle the emissions challenge together and if we want farmers to reduce their own emissions, they're going to need to be rewarded for that as well. Well, that's all we have time for, but you can read a lot more about how our planet is changing on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.